Rivers, are you receiving me? I am. Good. I'm on... Marked vantage points on your map. Use them to take pictures of the... Skynet installations. And although this is a recon mission, you have clearance to engage at will. Over and out. possibility that you'll encounter a T-47 there. It's Skynet's newest Walker-type HK. If you can, take a photo of a functioning unit that we can analyze. Over and out. That's gotta be Colin's hideout. It's like Colin rigged this place with traps. <laughs> There has to be a hospital nearby.
this is it. Looks like Colin was really prepared. Or maybe he was playing. <laughs> Aaron will appreciate that. Sending you the first set of pictures. That's exactly what we need. Move to the second point. Commander, I've encountered Skynet's plasma storage. You have a green light to destroy any Skynet structures in Pasadena. But keep in mind, that is not your highest priority. If you want to save ammo, overloading the main computer and any storage facility will do the trick.
neutralized. Neutralized? You were supposed to take a picture of a functioning unit. Seven neutralized. I'm Going through. Got it. One more to go. That has to be Jennifer's house. <gasps> That's Jennifer's father. the rest. Huh. Is that a map to your hiding place, Patrick?
That's the last one. Good job with these pictures, Rivers. We're one step closer to preparing a counterattack. I'm starting to see why Skynet isn't so fond of you. Now get... Get your ass back to the shelter. Jacob, how is Pasadena? Uh, you know what? Forget I asked. I don't want to know. I'm just glad that you're all right. And how are you doing? I guess I'm a little nervous before tomorrow. I, I never asked you. What are you planning to do tomorrow? I've been meaning to tell you earlier, but I panicked. And that's because... I decided to go with Ryan. We'll find somewhere safe, away from all this. You have to understand, I need to do what's best for Patrick. I'm his big sis. I need to protect him. 
I... I haven't told him yet. He'll be devastated leaving you and Aaron, but I think it's for the best. Aren't you curious about what happened in Pasadena? No. I think I'd rather keep that place in the past. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've never been outside of Pasadena until now. Can you believe that? That's not surprising. After all, that's where your home is. Where it used to be. Right now, I'm going to try someplace new to call home. I did my traveling through pictures and postcards that wanderers brought with them. My favorite had a little flamingo drinking water from a lake on it. Its long red neck curved like a snake. Patrick's mother gave me that postcard. Hmm. It's funny how I never met my mother, but I was around to see Patrick's leave him. I thought Patrick was your brother. In our house, we were all brothers and sisters. But me and Patrick, we've always had this special bond. Felt what the other one was feeling. <laughs> We'd even get sick together. I remember the day Patrick's mom brought him in. They were both tired and dirty, so we took care of them. Patrick was crying a lot. He was teething at the time. I think that was what scared her away. She just couldn't handle the crying. How was she? I loved her. For the time she was with us, I liked to pretend she was my mother, too. After she took off, I was devastated. But my father said, You need to grow up. You have a brother now. So I burned the postcard. The little red flamingo flew up in flames. And I promised myself I'd never be weak again. But I guess we all need someone we can be weak with sometimes, don't we? Wake up! We need to move. What? What's going on? Everyone, wake up! You need to get out of here. Who the fuck are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't stay here any longer. She asks a question, and I suggest answering. You don't want to do that. I've got this place rigged with explosives, and there's a detonator in my pocket. You got what? Do you mind? Lower your gun, Ryan. He's the one that saved my life. What do you want from us? You have to get out of here. Skynet's on its way. They finally found you. What do you mean, they found us? They were looking for us? Not for you. For him. He's essential to winning this war. Skynet knows that. That's why they've been following him for months. I have to make sure nothing happens to him. In a couple of minutes, an infiltrator will walk in here trying to kill him. I can't let that happen. We have to bury that Terminator here once and for all. All right, everybody, you heard him. Let's get moving. I'll get the bus ready. There's no time for that. There's a passage here. It will lead you out. Use it. <gasps> what was that? All right, everyone, get out! Jacob! Give me that. It's the same one. It's the same model. Leave! Now! How the hell's he still alive? Go! 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 Watch out! Don't just stand there! Run! Baron listened to us. She could no longer deny that this infiltrator was a real threat. She decided to take everyone in, on her terms. The shelter was on high alert, but thanks to the intel I gathered in Pasadena, we slowed the advance of the Annihilation Line and gained some time. Just enough to start preparing the counterattack.
Sergeant, at ease. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. Sorry for underestimating you. I guess I should salute or something? How's Patrick? Every day a little better. Aaron says he'll be back on his feet in no time. She's done a great job with him. I wish I could repay her somehow. It just doesn't seem that she needs anything. Getting ready for another scavenging run? No, I just came out here to catch my breath. Baron is giving us the entire evening off, believe it or not. Doesn't sound like her. I need to report to Baron. Rivers, DN four six eight nine zero. The commander is expecting you in the control room, Sergeant. Marachino Chanzi. I don't get it. How did they bring that buggy down here? Hey, I'm just catching up with Mark. I'll get back to work in a couple of minutes. You won't tell, right? <laughs> uh, but, but no, seriously, you won't tell, right? I'm going out soon. I haven't made my daily quota yet. I still have three more rats to catch. If you see one, let me know, okay? Do you need anything? Hey, Ryan, how's everything? Uh, exactly as you would imagine. Barons keep me busy. They weren't kidding when they said she's a hard ass. What did you hear? A lot of rumors going around of how she's sending insubordinate workers to the front line. And by insubordinate, I mean people who ain't willing to work 18 hours a day. Every day. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. Temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. Didn't you try to reach home? Some people did. Most of us were scared of what we'd find if we did get home, so... We conveniently said we are stranded here anyways, and stayed. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still have my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're gonna be famous, because we're the only living band in the world. You played in a band? I did. One of the few things I was better at than Tucker. He didn't have much talent, but he loved the idea of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Especially the first two. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. What did you do? I froze. I didn't run to help. I didn't scream. I didn't even move. I just stood there, like a coward. A tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam, just like that. Seven other people died before we finally destroyed that thing. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era.
Are you all right? Me? Honey, I'm about the most well-adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. Jennifer? I'm worried about her. I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers, and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. You mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say, the Resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey, I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. Take care. How are you doing? Good. Aaron's going to let me leave in a couple of days. Thanks for bringing that chalk. I've been drawing a lot. I'd be so bored without it. How do you like living in the shelter? There's a lot of people here. I like that. I heard a funny joke yesterday. You want to hear it? Yeah, tell me. What's brown and sticky? A stick! <laughs> That's funny. I know, right? How's Jennifer? She's out a lot, but I understand. She's a scavenger. I have to go. Alvin lost his spider scout again. Man, I saw it crawling through the shelter earlier. Almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me. You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned. So I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing. But Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now, we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central Core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the Central Core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So, how did I get here? The same way you did. I was born, raised, then given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? We don't have a choice. Exactly. We're just going through the motions. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. That doesn't mean we should give up and stop fighting. No. No, it doesn't. I'm just warning you. Don't hold your breath waiting for all this to be over. There will always be another war. Besides, I'm not a fighter. When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. 
I'm a bully. <laughs> Who wants to be a bully? Believe me, there will come a time when you'll become whatever you need to be to survive. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. It takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you. What's happening, Private? A couple of aerials flew in and dropped containers full of metals. They started shooting while our defense systems did nothing. What about the doctor? Where's Alvin? He's still out there. All right. There's one more thing. Before I got hit and dragged here, I saw something. I'm not sure, but I think it was one of our own soldiers that led Skynet's attack. Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses, and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. You two follow me. We have to reach those defense systems. Yes, sir. Spiders up ahead. Got it. Lead the way. This way. Good to see you, Sergeant. What's the status? We've got a defensive perimeter set up just down the road. Doesn't seem to be working. Skynet dropped reinforcements behind their backs. Now that between a rock and a hard place. All right, we need to reach our guys. Let's clear the way.
that away from you. We need to rescue the dock before those tanks reach us! Oh shit! We're too late! They're already here! This is it! Take care of those drones! Wait here! I'll go get the doctor! Alvin! Oh my god! I'm actually glad to see you! What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers... We need to leave now! Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that! Are you alright? We need to move! You don't have to tell me twice! Escort secured! Gah! Go! I don't like this! I don't like any of this! Ariel! Okay, go! It's turning around! It's right behind us! Don't look back! Good idea! You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. Hey. <laughs> Glad to see you alive. And thanks for sticking your neck out for us. I wanted to tell you that, you know, just in case. Hey, are you alright? We just got the news about the attack. They're getting closer, aren't they? Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. How are the wounded doing? The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up, and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> That's your fault, young man. Have you tried looking for him? I've looked for him for a while. I went to the place where we said we'd meet if we ever got separated. But he wasn't there. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself. Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway, what I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. 
I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? Uh, d did you talk to her? I is she mad at me? If I follow her orders, then I'm a bad guy. If I don't follow her orders, then I'm a lousy, incompetent egghead without a spine. There's no winning with her! Huh. Wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. The truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. <clears throat> I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound stupid, but... It just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick hurt, I start to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry, I changed my mind since. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You have a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. I don't think I'd make for a good role model. <laughs> I never knew Jacob Rivers could be so coy. Be proud. You're a hero. The Resistance owes you a lot. And so do I. <clears throat> if you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually, I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think about it? I didn't know what to think. <clears throat> Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that I wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous. And with time, it even got to my father. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, he stopped making jokes. It had never been as quiet at the house as it had been back then. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door. He started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. I wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you, 
to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ugh. All right, this is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the Infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. <laughs> I sure made his day. That huge guy? Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to the scientist? He was always doing his experiments, trying to outsmart Skynet. One day he fucked up. And because of that, he's no longer with us. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that, it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. Patrick, you're up? There are people who need help more than me. Anyway, I can't talk. I have to bring something important to Aaron. Plasma containers. Looks like Skynet's here for good. Flamethrower! If I could get close enough to take a picture...
good enough needs to be perfect. Not good enough needs to be perfect. Seems to be coming from here. Upstairs. Who left this here? It's probably a trap. Better be worth it, Ryan. Skynet's listening. Time to look for the second tracker. slow them down a little. I think I'm getting closer. It's got to be here. They got him too. Ooh, his goggles look intact. Let's see the last picture he took. The infiltrator. It's back. Baron was right. Commander! Talk to me. They're dead. Everything turned out the way you said it would. Copy that. Get out of there. We need to figure out our next move. Let's meet at the docks. Get there as soon as possible. Over and out. Why would she give out our location?
You're still alive? Good. Apparently Skynet's got a real hard-on for you. So we figured why not use you as bait? Aren't you afraid that Skynet will bring a lot of firepower if they know we're both here? Afraid? No. Prepared for that eventuality? Yes. We've got eyes on the ambush site from every angle. If anyone shows up, it means they were listening. What if it's one of our guys, or just a scavenger? Too bad. We can't have anyone or anything sabotage our plan. Not this time. This time? We were very close once before. For years, we've been preparing for the final attack. But it took just one man to fuck everything up. That day, Perry... Our previous field commander died, and I inherited control of South Division. Since then, I've been making sure that no one fucks up again. We've got movement. Take position. What do you have? A hooded man's walking down the street. Might be a scavenger. Rivers, you saw him. Is it the same model? Is it the infiltrator? I can't tell. We're waiting for your signal. I think that might be it. You think? Good enough for me. Cease fire! Cease fire! Target down! I repeat, target down! Go check him! Eyes on the target. Proceed with caution. Is he dead? What the fuck? It's the target! You can't get away. Fire at will! He's in the open! It's in the open! It's a fucking machine! It's backed against the wall! We've got it now! Generation plasma rifle. I want it. It won't fucking die. Shoot. It's inside! Rivers! Rivers, we're trying to get through. You can't let it get away, you hear?
Commander. We got it. We finally got it. Good job, Rivers. Stay there. We're on our way. There was no doubt anymore. Skynet had created a cybernetic organism. It was designed to blur the line between a man and a machine. People started to think that there were Terminators amongst us, wolves in sheep's clothes. Some of us left, even though we hadn't seen any other infiltrators yet. Or at least, we didn't think we had. And that fear of not knowing was what turned the tide of this war. That night, Skynet won. Uh, I still have to run some tests, so f for now I would say no. We need some more time, Connor. I know you don't want to hear this, Commander, but if there's one person who can help us, it's Dr. Mac. Mac? It, we don't even know if he's alive. He is. He's in the Hollywood Hills. We knew a time would come when we'd need him again, so we've kept an eye on him. Wait. You've been watching him without telling me? You let your emotions cloud your judgment before, Commander. That's why I decided that Mac's whereabouts were no longer this your This is bullshit. Concern. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. A man that makes that's mistakes. That's enough, Commander. You know what happened last time. He's the reason Perry's dead. I said that's enough. Sergeant Rivers? Yes, sir. Techcom believes that being marked for termination is a badge of honor. A sign that we're doing something right. We wear it proudly. And knowing you're wearing such a badge, Rivers, is all I need to trust you with handling this mission. Commander Baron will fill you in on the details. Good luck, soldier. Over and out. Looks like you're going to Hollywood Hills. Dr. Edwin Mack is the one who taught us how to use Skynet's weapons, so there's a chance he can do it again. Take him that second generation plasma rifle and see if he's able to reprogram it. If we want to use Skynet's weapons, we need to bypass their encryption lockouts. How will I find him? He's obsessed with surveillance. So when you get there, look for any cameras, biometric sensors, or any other tech stuff. He should be around. That's it. What do you need? Um, anything I should know about Dr. Mack before I leave? Only that he can't be trusted, and he's highly manipulative. So you need to stay cautious. Was Mac the one whose drone you smashed? Yes. Yes, it was. I've never told this to anyone, but... Before I met Mac and Perry, I was wandering alone. Didn't have a map, so I drew one myself. The first people I came across were two guys. Old enough to remember Judgment Day. We camped out together. They gave me advice, we shared some stories. Sounds nice, right? A little too good to be true. It was. I was too naive to notice it back then. When I woke up, all my things were gone, including my map. There I was, lost in the desert. Thirst and hunger. I knew I was gonna die. I passed out with my face in the sand. But next thing, I was lying in a bed, bathed and wearing clean clothes. I'm guessing there's no happy ending to this story either. You're starting to learn. Through the window, I saw thousands of Terminators. First, I thought it was a work camp. But it was something else. A Skynet research facility. They kept me alive, but I didn't know why. I thought I was the only human there. But after a while, someone came into my cell. A man. Well-dressed, clean-shaven. You want to take a guess who that was? An infiltrator. In a way. He was a traitor to his race. Bastard was selling every piece of knowledge the machines didn't have. In return, they gave him everything he wanted. 
When he was done stuffing his face with food, he had another request. He wanted a whore. It lasted months until I got to wrap a towel around his neck and make his eyes pop. You don't want to see people for what they really are. I've seen their true face. That traitor, those two guys in the desert, Mac, they all showed it to me. It's not pretty. The truth is, the only reason I fight for the Resistance is because I despise people just a little less than the machines. Sure, let's trust someone who gets called Dr. Death. That won't bite us in the ass. In the meantime, I'll see what I can learn from the new CPU we acquired from that infiltrator. This could be the breakthrough that we've all been waiting for. I need to concentrate, so please don't disturb me. Jacob, do you have a minute? Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. I know he'd be stupid to go there since now it's behind the Annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Look at him. He never talks to anyone. He just sits there. I bet he's one of those machines. Jacob! What's the situation like in the shelter? Not that great. People are getting nervous. A lot have already left and even more plan to leave. Even Mark and Laura saw them packing earlier. And what about you? Uh, just the thought of running again is making me sick. Must be getting old. Plus, we got everything we can need right here. Where else would I go? Besides, I have faith that Baron would never let anything happen to this place. She's way too uptight about security. Earlier, you said that a new era started. What changed? Well, for one thing, with Tucker dead, I became the new leader of the group. Something I never expected or wanted, for that matter. What did you do about it? That same night, I looked around at all those people who survived, and I felt scared. Scared of what they expected of me. I started to walk pilot. I don't know if I wanted to run away or to kill myself, but, but then something surreal happened. I found a door in the ground in the middle of nowhere. I was real unsure about what I might find under it, but what I did find was the aftermath of a massacre. More Terminators? That's exactly what I thought at first, but it turned out to be something even more scary. It looked like they decided to commit suicide. I couldn't understand it. To me, they had everything. Food, water. They even had a case of beer. So, I got shit-faced and started crying over my brother's death. But I realized something. I realized that I could maybe survive there. Did you stay there by yourself? No. I told everybody about the place. I felt I owed them. And after that, we were all right. That night, I learned two things. Firstly, that it's okay to be scared. Secondly, that there are two sides to everybody. Ironically, me being a scaredy cat turned me into a good leader. And that's how I found that place, and that's what motivated me to help others. But Tucker, well, he was a leader from the start. 
But he had an ugly side, too. He killed those who opposed him. He was a real scumbag, but he was my brother. He made me want to be a good person for the both of us. Our hangover wasn't a high price to pay for that lesson. Jacob, I didn't see you there. Where are you going? I'm going out scavenging. Don't worry. I'm past thinking about running away. Knowing how much you'd miss me made me not want to leave. <clears throat> Where's Patrick? He's getting ready. I'm taking him with me. I figure it's time for him to see what's out there. Is everything okay? You seem far away. Nothing can get past you, can it? I have been thinking about the day we met. I never told you how we really ended up there. <coughs> you can tell me anything. I know I can. That's why you're the first person I'm telling this to. That day, loud hammering woke me up. When I came downstairs, I saw my father nailing the window shut. Through the crack, I saw them coming. Hundreds of metal heads and their red eyes. Even though they're just empty shells, I could feel the hate radiating from them. What did you do? I made Patrick stay upstairs and went back to talk to my father. We argued for a minute or two and I tried to pull him away from the window. He pushed me away. I tried it again, but he shoved me. And this time I fell. I didn't recognize him as he was reaching for a shotgun. He said, I shouldn't worry about the machines. They wouldn't hurt us. I don't even remember how. But the gun was already in my hands. I closed my eyes and went someplace else. Didn't even hear the shot. I didn't hear Patrick's steps either. He saw you? He did. He was staring at me like I was a stranger. He didn't scream or cry. He just stared. I threw the gun away, grabbed Patrick, and tried not to notice the hole in my father's unmoving chest. As we ran, I could hear them coming, so we found somewhere to hide. Then you came. I wanted to tell someone about all this, but... I was afraid to. You don't have to be afraid. I'm not. Not anymore. We talk a lot about how heartless the machines are. And I started to think that maybe I was too. I probably would have convinced myself of that if it wasn't for you keeping me sane. Thank you for everything. I never thought I would find a friend in times like these. Is it, is it, is it true? I can look human now? Oh, what's with the dogs? Eh, they've been like that ever. Jacob, are you receiving me? You're alive! Why? God damn it! What does he mean? Get everyone out of the shelter? That camera. Dr. Mac! Is that you? The Resistance needs your help. Mac! It would be a shame to lose that camera. Now, why would you do that? Because we don't have time for this. Come out here! Skynet has developed a new Terminator model, the Infiltrator. You've seen one already? We've captured one, and we need your help. Are you there? How do I know you're not an Infiltrator? You've seen them. You know how incredibly lifelike they are, so you should understand my concerns. Head up that hill. 
want me to help you, you have to take a test for me. Test? Yes. To determine whether you're a Terminator or not. And be careful. I'm watching you. Trying to fight you? Very clever way to make me think that you're not one of them. Unfortunately for you, I'm not that easily fooled. We don't have time for any of this. Just tell me where you are. I am not a robot. Living tissue would make you a cybernetic organism, not a robot. Words have meaning. Conversations between human beings would be a lot easier if we all just trusted each other and understood the deeper meaning of what we said. Keep that in mind during this test. This mansion is filled with Terminators. They've been trying to find me for a while now, all eight of them. Well... I guess with you in there, that makes it nice. No water in that pool. I'd have you jump in and see if you float. Wait, that's a different tent. Get 
on that stage, quick. Good. Now wait here for a moment. My patience is wearing thin. Why am I even here? Here? On the stage, you mean? Um, because I wanted you to recite a poem. That's right, that's why I got you on this stage, to invoke the fear of public speaking in you. This will allow me to check your emotional response. Very important in these sort of tests. So, if you could go ahead and recite a poem. In the shadows where we live, searching for compassion. Oh, you're actually doing it? I wasn't really expecting that. So, you've been taught to obey orders. I see. Oh, now wait. Be quiet. They regularly patrol this area. Don't let them see you. So you know I'm not a Terminator? Of course I do. They are way better shots than you. Then why are you making me do all this? <sighs> because I want you to grab something for me before I help you. Turn left when you leave the theater. There you'll find a plane crash site. My spider scout should be stuck somewhere around. Just grab it and bring it back to me in one piece. Completely took over this place.
locker. Where would I find a locker nearby? It's not you, Peter. Poor Aaron. I've got it! Good job! I'm in my vault, in one of the buildings up the street. Meet me there. This is it.
I know it looks tempting, but please do not destroy that plasma container. It powers this whole laboratory. Sorry for making you run around like that. But because of the recent increase in Terminator patrols, I get to that spider scout myself. Can I see it? Thank you. I have a gift. That's a token of my appreciation. While you're out looking for my spider scout, I used some leftover parts to make a new radio for you. I've been picking up your signal for a while now, and I imagine that Skynet has as well. So, I've made it harder to decipher. You won't have to worry about them eavesdropping. You've been listening, so you know why I'm here. Yes. Now, let me see that gun. What a beauty. I've got to tell you, if Skynet wasn't so gung-ho about killing everything... <laughs> What's interesting about it is that the matter inside is far more condensed. That way it releases more energy on discharge, dealing much more damage. And also its plasma blast is violent, so that's different. Can you bypass the encryption lockout so we can use it? Alvin couldn't. Alvin couldn't bypass an egg timer if his life depended on it. I'll do it, but it's not that simple. First, you'll have to bring me Skynet's latest security codes. Security codes? They will allow us to access Skynet's mainframe. But they change them regularly, so I need you to connect to any HK unit and download the newest security codes. To do that, you'll need my code reader. When I was... excused from the shelter, they made me leave all my equipment behind. Alvin should have my code reader. Okay, is that everything? As far as the security codes go, yes. Then I'm moving out. Actually, I've got a question about that infiltrator that you have there. Is it intact? Or more specifically, its neural net CPU? I've been hacking Skynet's units and I'm noticing similarities in their patterns. I think I'm ready to reprogram the CPU from that infiltrator. It's more powerful than any other. Should I ask Baron about that, too? No, 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 she can't know about it. She would not approve. I know how this sounds, but you need to steal it for me. What? I'm the only one that can reprogram that chip. For some reason, Skynet has started to learn at a geometric rate. We need to prepare ourselves for whatever's coming, and I believe that having an infiltrator on our side will give us the advantage. Just think about it. Commander. Rivers, what's the status? Max alive. He will help us, but he need advice he left at the shelter. All right, we can do that. Report to me when you get back. Over and out. I have to say, you're doing quite well without my help. What are you doing here? You have to get the ones you care about to leave the shelter. They'll be in great danger if you don't do what I say. But remember, Jacob, that has to stay between us. Why? Because things need to play out the way they're supposed to, that's why. I have been here from the beginning. Each of your friends already knows the reason they need to leave. You just have to remind them. Who the hell are you? That... I can't tell you. It could change the choices that you make in the future, and we can't have that. So whatever happens, you can't know my identity. Not yet, at least. Can I tell Commander Baron? No. She won't allow it. Then she will start to question you and keep you away from your missions. That cannot happen. Do you know anything about a CPU that Mac wants me to steal? I do. If hacked, we could take over an infiltrator. Dr. Mac is capable of doing that. I'm not so sure if Alvin can. I think you should steal it. 
I think I'm more confused than I was before. Just stay focused. We'll see each other soon. It's quiet. You know, quiet's good. Quiet means we're not getting shot at. Rivers, DN four six eight nine zero. Welcome back, Sergeant. Jacob, did you see Jennifer on your way here? Isn't she here? She hasn't come back yet, but I'm sure she's fine. About Hollywood Hills, how did it go? I've been to Hollywood Hills and found your old house. Did you? I found Peter's body there. They got him, but he left you a letter. I'm sorry. I... Uh, I have to get back to work. God knows, there's plenty to do. Aaron. What, Jacob? Your husband left for Mexico. What are you talking about? I found this letter in your house. It's from Peter. It says that he's heading there to look for you. He couldn't find me when I was right under his nose. How's he gonna find me in Mexico? What a sweet fool. You should go look for him. You're right. I have to find him before he hurts himself. Baron's not gonna like that, but she never scared me. Thank you for finding him for me, Jacob. Don't touch that! That's how things get lost! Hey, Alvin! Could you keep it down? I'm working with highly sensitive instruments here. I don't want to recalibrate them every time you say, hey. Anyways, I'm busy. Come back later. The Dr. Max still alive. Huh, you're back. How is Hollywood Hills? Crawling with Terminators. And what about Mac? How's he? Was he compliant? Fine, but he needs Skynet security codes if we want him to reprogram that plasma rifle. Fair enough. Talk to Alvin about that. Okay, I will. Did Mac say anything else? He wanted me to steal a CPU from that infiltrator. Of course he did. And since you're telling me this, I'm assuming you're not going to. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Talk to Alvin about those security codes and then... No, that's all he said. Okay. Talk to Alvin about those security codes and then come back to my quarters. I'll tell them to let you in. And one more thing, talk to Ryan. That buggy's been sitting there broken for too long. See if something's going on. I've got a suspicion that he's hiding something from me. Alvin! Huh? You know what? I'm actually jealous of Mac. He's out there, alone. No one's bothering him. 
If I had those working conditions, I would be just as successful as him. He told me that I'll need some sort of a device to download Skynet's security codes from an HK. Do you have it? Yes, about that. Um, do you remember that day in downtown? I do, it was very traumatic. And because of that, I may have forgotten to bring back some things. Including that device? And the quantum battery which powers it. You won't be able to use it without it. So, I guess I'm off downtown. Yes, you do that. Hey, Jacob, what's happening? Baron wanted me to ask about that buggy. Is there a problem? Yeah, she's been nagging me to fix the electronics in this piece of shit for a while now. Do you think you can help me with it? <laughs> Why are you asking me? You're the mechanic. Listen, I'm good with tools. You give me a car with a gasoline engine, I'll make it run. But this electronic shit? <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Hell, most of my life, I live without electricity. <clears throat> Why not tell her? She won't let me cherry-pick my own responsibilities, you know that. She'll throw me right out of here if she finds out. That's why I need your help. Quartermaster will give you all the parts, tell you what to do. Just think about it. What's going on? Who did you say had those parts? The Quartermaster. I'll talk to him. Sure, sure, take How did you deal with stuff like this before? Oh, I usually asked Jennifer, one of the scavengers, to find a replacement for whatever it was I was supposed to fix. Yeah, I know. You don't have to say anything. I'll get right to it. I'm here to pick up parts for that buggy. Wasn't Ryan supposed to take care of that? Baron specifically asked me to keep an eye on it. Can he really fix it himself? No, he's been lying so that Baron would let him stay. Uh, she knew something was up all along. I'm going to report it, you know? I know. What the fuck, Rivers? What you think would happen, huh? Baron's kicking me out. That what you wanted? I'm a dead man. I told you, I can't work with so much noise, I need absolute silence, so please stop that. I swear I should just join Skynet! You know what, you're lucky. No one will ever mistake you for a machine. What do you mean? Those look like vibes to you? Ah. My commander's waiting for you. Well, here goes nothing. Commander. Welcome to the luxury part of the shelter. Oh, I fucking hate living underground. But hopefully we won't have too much longer. Thanks to people like us, this war will end soon. You proved that you'll do whatever it takes no matter the cost. And so will I. Don't think your efforts go unnoticed. You know, I killed a man long before I killed my first machine. And was hurt by a man long before machines hurt me. Apart from plasma burns, I've got man-made scars underneath these tattoos. And I'll never forget. In the good days, they don't hurt. And I feel like this world is worth fighting for. 
On the bad days, they make me want to quit. Give up and run like everyone else. But we're so close. Skynet's almost finished. So you can understand I can't run. I need your help, Jacob. I need you to get rid of Mac. He's unpredictable. He sabotaged our mission and killed our men before. I cannot let it happen again. I need you to kill him as soon as he reprograms that rifle. You look shocked. But I think I can find a way to persuade you. If you're into it, that is. I am. That's what I thought. Commander. Uh... I, I can't do it. <laughs> That's the first time you've actually managed to surprise me, Rivers. And as for Mac. Don't disappoint me. Dismissed. I'm here. I marked the location of Max Code Reader and the battery pack on your map. Let me know when you find them. Wait! You shouldn't be here. Skynet's right around the corner. Yeah? Show me a corner Skynet's not around. You can leave now, because I'm not opening this door for anyone or anything. I'm just here to help. You want to help me? Fine. Go to my hideout at the metro station and bring back my transmitter. Then you'll help me. All right, I can do that. You know I'm getting closer. There are still plenty of resistance sensors in the area. I see everything. I'll be your eye in the sky. Great. Uh. 
now all I need is the battery. Alvin, I'm halfway there. Well, that's not quite true. Once you get the code reader working, you still have to find an HK to connect to. But don't worry, I'm sure they call them hunter killers just for intimidation. Got the code reader working. Good. Now go look for an HK. During the attack, our team heavily damaged an HK tank. That's your safest bet, but be careful. The area is filled with Terminators. If I were you, I'd sneak past them.
Uh, I've got it. I thought you could fool me. I know you're one of those things. You're not getting away, you motherfucker. What? Resistance! Stand still! Don't shoot! Ah oh, shit, your friends are coming for me! You need to hide! A Skynet antenna up ahead. Looks like they set up an outpost here. Should I engage? That's not your main objective, but I'll leave that up to you.
that correctly? We've got a problem. That HK is still functional. I can't get near. You'll need a rocket launcher to even make a dent in that thing. You better find one. Got it. I'm trying to analyze its weakness. Okay. Its power supply is located on its back. Shoot it. Hurry. Skynet's reinforcements are starting to show up. Nice shot. Now get the cover until it returns to the scanning routine. Case down. Good job, Rivers. Download the security code and get out of there. I need to take a nap. Got it. Moving out.
I've got the codes. All right, then let's get right to it. Please insert stolen security codes now. Strike a key when ready. And it's done. Like they say, easy money. That's it? With the proper equipment, it only takes a moment. We can fight Skynet with our own weapons. I believe that goes for that infiltrator as well. The first prototype just came out a couple of days ago. Imagine what happens if they become mass-produced. We need to hurry before that happens. That infiltrator has been after us for more than just a couple of days. What do you mean? It's been following me for months. But that simply can't be. That prototype has been out for mere days. It's the same model that destroyed Pacific Division. But I'm connected to Skynet's mainframe and I can see their plans. I'm telling you that what you're saying is not possible. Unless... Oh my god. They will do it. They will finish the TDE. Finish what? TDE, Time Displacement Equipment. For all intents and purposes, it's a time machine. A time machine? Yes, a time machine. You go in, you pick a date, you press a button, and just like that you'll be watching your younger self learning to tie your shoelaces. You know, time travel. Skynet's been working on TDE for a while now. I've been monitoring its progress, but it's still not ready yet. So how could they send anyone back if it's not ready? They didn't, but they will. Don't you see? In one alternative future, they finished TDE and sent a Terminator back to our times. That has to be the one you saw. You couldn't have seen it otherwise. It didn't exist yet. That would explain why they suddenly started to learn at such a geometric rate. This is big. This is really big. So, if it's done, then... What the fuck can we do now? We can still fight for this future. Our future. You could stop Skynet before they finish building time displacement equipment and send any more Terminators back. I'm forwarding everything I've learned to Connor. He needs to know. And you go report back to Baron. Speaking of Baron... What happened between you and Baron? Years ago, Connor gave an order to infect Skynet with a virus. To do it, we had to reboot a T-800 model I was trying to reprogram. I warned them that I wasn't done and that the Terminator was fully functional, but they didn't listen. So, as expected, it went online and sent our coordinates to Skynet. But not only that, it attacked and killed Perry. Baron took it personally, because they were... an item. She's been holding a grudge ever since. I got that chip for you. Is it any different from the others? Is it any different? Of course it is! Its CPU is a neural net processor, a learning computer. It's been updated to incorporate infiltrating techniques. Thus, its processing power exceeds any other chip. This could be exactly what we need to win this war, Jacob. I, I have to warn you. Baron sent me to kill you. If she finds out that I didn't, she'll send someone who will. Thank you for telling me. If what you're saying is true, I don't have much time. As soon as I'm done packing, I'll be on my way. I've already sent all the blueprints and access codes to Connor. Grab that plasma behind you, and go see Baron. Commander. I'm here. Is the thing with Mac taken care of? It is, but I have some news for you. Go ahead.
Here's the man of the hour. Sergeant, are you taking a tour with us? Repeat it back to me. Know your target and what's behind it. And what else? Shit, I forgot. They gave me a rifle? I don't even know how to use one. They said it's hot, but it doesn't seem hot to me at all. Rivers, just when you thought shit couldn't get any more crazy, this happens. So what now? With the infiltrators coming out and news of a fucking time machine, Connor wants to finish this war fast. Are we prepared? Nowhere near. That's why an all-out attack is our only option. Alvin managed to locate Skynet's central core through the hijacked satellite. It turns out it's right under our nose. It's in the basement of the old Griffith Observatory. So we're moving out. You are. Connor wants me to stay here to coordinate the attack. And his North Division is heading to stop Skynet from sending anything through the time displacement equipment. So this is it? It does seem that way. You better get all your things sorted. Take your time. You're leaving in a couple of hours. Dismissed. Jacob? You're moving out? I am. What about you? I'm part of a scavenging team now, but Commander Baron gave us an order to get back to the shelter. If you see Jennifer, can you tell her that? Okay. Uh, where is she? The last time I saw her, she was upstairs. Nice view. How did you find me? Patrick told me you might be somewhere around here. It's my thinking spot. Is he worried? No, he seems happy. How did he do on your first scavenging hunt together? Well, at first he was excited just to be outside. A little too excited. Some drones spotted him. But I did it. I managed to protect him. Nothing happened. And from that point on, he understood how dangerous a scavenger's life can be. See, you'll make a great scavenging team. Yeah, I'm starting to see it that way. And because of that, I was thinking... About leaving? <laughs> I don't have any secrets from you, do I? Yeah, about leaving. With Patrick. I think you should leave. Are you serious? I thought you'd be the last person to encourage me to go. What about what you said earlier? What changed? Things are different now. It's not safe here anymore, and I think you should go. Jacob, I don't know what to say. You know that your opinion matters to me the most. 
To be honest, you're the only thing keeping me here. Well, oh. that's it then. I guess I'm going. <laughs> you're always looking out for me. Thank you for that. I know you're moving out soon, but there's something I want to say. Regardless of what happens later, I hope that we'll find each other. Thank you for always being there for me. I'm lucky to have someone like you. And I'm lucky to have you. I hoped you'd say that. You know what? I'll stay here just a little while longer. Tell Patrick not to worry. I'll be back soon. I'll do that. You ready to move out? I am. All right. Let's do this. Thirty years ago, the machines decided to wipe out all of humanity because they feared that they were a threat to their existence. Today, we make their fear come true. Sergeant Rivers, you were requested by John Connor to lead the Alpha Team. You will be responsible for carrying out the attack on the location of Skynet's central core. We will create a diversion to lure out any HK aerials patrolling the area. That should give you some time to breathe. Taking out Skynet's ground forces, that's on you. Remember, the goal is to destroy Skynet's central core, at whatever cost. Good luck out there. Dismissed. Everyone, this is us. Let's move out. We're two minutes out from the observatory. As soon as we get past that barrier, expect Skynet to show up. Stay focused! Silverfish! 12 o'clock! Neutralized! Let's keep moving! Metals ahead!
We're through! Keep pushing forward! Another infiltrator? No, he's with us. Took you a while. How did you know we were coming? I thought you'd know by now. I know more than you think. Better prepare yourself. on that HK! They're coming from the West Gate! This is it! Follow me. Central core is downstairs. How do you know? I've been here before. I've seen it.
Watch out! to be right here. They knew we were coming. They moved it. It's a trap. A fucking trap. We have to move. Those missiles are headed this way. Wait! If we triggered the attack, it means that this place is still connected to Skynet's mainframe. If we trace where the signal's coming from, we'll know the Central Core's actual location. How could they know we were coming? When Skynet was about to lose the war, they sent an infiltrator back in time. We must have warned them about this attack. How do you know all this? Because I went back after that infiltrator. Yes! I've got the coordinates. Let's go! All of this will make sense to you soon, but right now, we need to go! Commander, Central Core, it's not here. It was an ambush. Commander! You can't die here. Get up! Baron, I've got the coordinates. Can you hear me? Where the hell are you? Commander! Rivers, you're alive! What happened here? An infiltrator got in. Brought lots of friends with him. We didn't stand a chance. Since they didn't go offline, I assume we did not destroy Skynet Central Core either? No. No, we didn't. It was an ambush. They moved it before we got there. So this is it? We lost? We lost this goddamn war? Not yet. What do you mean? I got the Central Core's real coordinates. You have? I've got to learn not to doubt you anymore, Rivers. We need to call Connor. He may still be able to stop Skynet. Forget it. I couldn't get him on the radio for hours. You need to find him. You need to give him those coordinates. First, let's get you out of here. No. You don't have time for this. You have to leave me here. I can't. You're not gonna disobey my final order, are you? 
Before you leave, I've got a confession to make. There's a reason I wasn't so keen on you from the beginning. Remember that list of people Skynet marked for termination? I lied. I told you that you were number three. The truth is you're number two. Just behind Connor. You took my spot. And for the life of me, I couldn't understand why. But now I know. They're coming. You need to leave, now. Use a vent in the command room to sneak past them. And then find Connor, and give him those coordinates. Don't worry about me. If they come here, I'll just reason with them. <clears throat> I still have a couple magazines full of arguments. Now go! Good luck, Jacob. The stranger died in that ambush trying to protect me. He came from the future to save my life and I don't even know his identity. But thanks to his sacrifice, I managed to escape with the Central Core's true location. When I got back to the shelter, I realized that getting that information cost the life of many others as well. I headed out to find John Connor and his North Division to take part in the last all-out attack. Anyone receiving me? This is Sergeant Jacob Rivers, DN46890. 
Anyone out there? Skynet got to them. If anyone's hearing this, please respond. Is anyone else out there? God damn it. Look, we got one. He's wearing a resistance uniform. Who did you kill to get that, you filthy machine? No, no! Wait, he's human! Sorry about that, Sergeant. The infiltrators took some of our key positions, so we're extra cautious. If we'd known that you were joining us in the North Division, that would have never happened. You know who I am. We all do, Sergeant Rivers. John Connor told us about you. He said you'd come and bring those coordinates. How did he know I'd have them? That you'll have to ask him yourself. He's waiting for you upstairs. He's the only survivor from Baron's division. That's him. The one Connor's been talking about. Sergeant. Commander. Sergeant Rivers. I've been expecting you. I took the liberty of collecting the Central Corps coordinates you brought us. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Are we preparing to attack the core? I've sent a unit to do that. We're getting ready to strike the time displacement equipment. Very soon Skynet will realize that they're losing this war. So they'll try to send infiltrators back in time to prevent that from happening. Do we stand a chance? Thanks to the security codes that Mac provided, we've been able to seize control of an HK tank for the first time. It should give us the advantage against Skynet's defense grid. We'll smash it once and for all. I understand that all this might be confusing to you, so if you have any questions, now's the time to ask them. Who is the stranger? In one alternative future, we reached the time displacement equipment and sent our soldiers back in time. Like always, the mission was to assure the safety of the people Skynet marked for termination. One of whom was you. Knowing the importance of your mission, many volunteered to go back. So I took it upon myself to choose a protector from among them. And the one I chose was you. You are the one you call stranger. How did you know that the Central Corps wasn't at the observatory? Understanding the changing nature of time travel made me anticipate the most unexpected events. So when I learned from a mutual friend of ours that a Terminator was sent back to our time, I suspected the future I was told would change. What do you mean? When that infiltrator connected to Skynet, it warned them about the attack on the observatory. They had to move the Central Core, otherwise they would lose again. Unfortunately, the intel we received came at a cost. But if there was any other way, I would have taken it gladly. Why am I targeted for termination? You're the one who discovered the true location of the Central Core. You're the messenger of the intel that could lead to Skynet's downfall. I'm sure you'll figure out the rest when the time comes. But right now, I want you to get ready. Tonight, soldier, we stop Skynet.
124 are on their way to the central core. Then we better get ready. Take whatever you need, Sergeant. Sergeant Rivers, it's time. I want you to take a team of my soldiers at your way to Skynet's defense grid. We have to destroy those turrets to get to the TDE, but don't worry. We'll provide the support. It's in your hands now, Rivers. Follow me. Commander! Commander. Defense grid, I see it. First sector is secured. All right, Rivers. Continue the offensive. Preparing to send in the tank. Watch out! Zero in on that T-47!
Another sector cleared. That's good to hear, Sergeant. The HK tank just went online. Gotta keep going. T-47 ahead! Two of them! Sergeant, I got a visual on the defense grid turrets. We breached the defense grid, Commander. Good. That HK will accompany you. Proceed forward. Remember, this is not over yet. Check your fire! That tank is ours! This 
is it! That's the lab they keep the time displacement thing! Spread out! Commander, what's going on? The 124 destroyed the Central Core and stopped Skynet. So is the war over? For some of us, yes. But just before we destroyed the Core, Skynet managed to send three Terminators back in time. The only thing in our power now is to send the Protectors to meet them. Protectors? The ones that will assure the safety of the people marked for termination. The first Protector has to be Sergeant Kyle Reese. He'll go after the T-800 that's targeting my mother as we speak. By killing her, Skynet will try to erase me from ever existing. The second one will seek to destroy the T-1000. T-1000? A Terminator made of mimetic polyalloy, sent back to kill me as a child. A single prototype, created by Skynet. It's too powerful for a single human being. That's why we'll have to send a Terminator of our own. Do you have that CPU that Mac reprogrammed? I do. You want to send a Terminator to protect your younger self? Won't you be afraid? I will be. Then, there's the matter of the infiltrator that was sent after you. The war can end for you right now, but the question is, are you willing to sacrifice your future to protect your past? By being here, you've already proven that this is not beyond your capabilities. But I'll leave the decision up to you. Will I be able to fix my past mistakes? I always believe that the future's not set. 
There's no fate but what we make for ourselves. You do have the power to change it, and protect the ones you care about. So, what will it be then? I... don't want to go. I cannot judge you. You've seen yourself die once, and that's probably once too many. There are volunteers that will gladly take your place. John Connor prepared the time displacement equipment to send protectors back in time. He knew that the final battle would not be fought here, but in the past. A resistance soldier named Kyle Reese was the first man to go back to 1984. His objective was to protect Sarah Connor, John's mother. The second one was not a man, but a Terminator. Using the chip Dr. Mac reprogrammed, we took control of a single infiltrator unit, Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. It was sent back to 1995 to intercept the sole T-1000 prototype and protect a young John Connor. I've decided not to go back in time. Plenty of volunteers wanted to take my place. John Connor chose a man from amongst them. I only hope that he does a better job than I did. After 30 years, this war against the machines is finally over. But not all of us live to see the end of it. We never found Baron's body in the shelter. She never stopped fighting. And if she's still alive, I doubt she ever will. She was the leader we needed in wartime. But I'm not sure if she'll find a place during this time of peace. I lied to Erin about her husband to make her leave the shelter. I saved her life, but at what cost? Was it my place to intervene and give her false hope? Ryan was kicked out of the shelter because of me. I hope that one day I will have a chance to explain to him why I did that. Jennifer and Patrick left before the attack. I'm glad I convinced her to leave. I hope that our paths will cross sometime soon. Baron asked me to kill Mac, but I couldn't do it. He left soon after my warning, only to be captured by Skynet. We found him alive in one of Skynet's prisons. As for me, it was time to start over.